Have you ever stopped in the middle of writing with a pencil and thought, wait, why do we call this stuff lead when it's clearly not metal? After all, pencils don't feel heavy like they're filled with lead pipes. You don't get poison from doing your math homework. And if you've ever snapped one in half, the inside doesn't look anything like shiny gray metal. It's just a crumbly, dark core. So where did the name come from? And why do we still call it lead today, even though we know it's actually something else? Let's take a closer look at the history of pencils, the mix-up that gave us the term pencil lead, and how the name just stuck around long enough to become everyday language, right here on History of Simple Things. Long before pencils existed, humans have been scratching, carving, and drawing with all sorts of materials. Ancient Egyptians wrote on papyrus with reed pens dipped in ink. Romans had styluses made of metal or bone for scratching letters into wax tablets. And if you think about it, these tools already carried a connection to metal writing. The Roman stylus, for example, was sometimes made of actual lead. People used it to press marks into wax or soft surfaces. Over time, the association between writing and lead started to build. The word plumbum, the Latin term for lead, even gave us words like plumbing and plumber, since lead was used in pipes. So in some ways, calling a writing tool lead wasn't too far-fetched in the old days. Fast forward to the 1500s in England. A storm uprooted a tree in the countryside of Borrowdale, and beneath the ground, locals stumbled upon something strange. It looked like a dark, shiny rock, but it wasn't a rock at all. It was soft enough to be cut into sticks and left black marks on paper and sheep's wool. This material was graphite. At first, people didn't really understand what graphite was. Scientists of that time assumed it was some form of lead because it had a similar silvery gray appearance. And since people already associated writing tools with lead, they simply called it plumbago, which literally means lead-like. This little misunderstanding is what gave birth to the term pencil lead. In reality, the core of a pencil has never been made of lead. It has always been graphite. The Borrowdale graphite deposit turned out to be one of the purest ever found. Locals discovered that this mysterious black substance could be sawed into sticks, wrapped in string, and used for marking. Farmers used it to mark sheep. Craftsmen sketched with it. And eventually, it became a go-to material for artists and writers. But because graphite is fragile, People tried different ways to protect it. Some wrapped it in string, others inserted it into wooden holders. This was the first step toward the modern pencil. Yet throughout all of this, people kept calling it lead, not knowing that chemically it was carbon. By the late 16th century, the wooden pencil as we know it began to take shape. Craftsmen would carve a stick of wood hollow out the center, insert a piece of graphite, and seal it shut. This design protected the fragile graphite while making the tool easier to hold. Over time, techniques improved. By the 18th century, the Frenchman Nicolas Jacques Conte developed a method of mixing powdered graphite with clay, then firing it in a kiln. This process made pencil cores stronger and allowed for different hardness levels, perfect for drawing, writing, and technical work. Even though Conti's invention had nothing to do with lead, the name pencil lead was already too deeply rooted in people's language to disappear. Here's the big question. Once scientists figured out it wasn't lead, why didn't the name change to something more accurate, like pencil graphite? The answer is surprisingly simple. Language is stubborn. When a word becomes common in everyday use, it's almost impossible to replace it. People had been calling it lead for centuries, 
and there wasn't enough reason to convince everyone to adopt a new term. Once a term becomes part of culture, it tends to stick. Because of the name, some people grew up believing that pencils contained actual lead and could cause poisoning if you poked yourself with one or accidentally chewed on the tip. Maybe you even heard a teacher or parent warn, don't put that pencil in your mouth, it's got lead. In reality, modern pencils have always been safe. The core is just graphite and clay, neither of which is toxic in the tiny amounts a person might encounter from writing. Of course, chewing on a pencil still isn't a great idea, but not because of lead. The danger would come more from swallowing wood splinters or choking on a broken piece. So if you've ever had a pencil poke your skin or leave a little gray mark, don't worry. You're not carrying around lead poisoning. You're just carrying a harmless bit of carbon under your skin. Even though we mostly think of graphite in the form of pencils, it's actually an incredibly important material. It's used as a lubricant, in batteries, in nuclear reactors, and even in high-tech applications like aerospace. Its structure allows layers of carbon atoms to slide easily over one another, which is why it works so well for writing. It leaves behind a trail of carbon as you drag it across paper. Pencils are really just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to graphite's usefulness. But interestingly, despite graphite's importance, most people still only encounter it in the form of a so-called lead pencil. The pencil itself has been a silent witness to history. Authors drafted their novels with it, architects designed buildings with it, and students the world over filled notebooks with it. From Da Vinci's sketches to the Apollo astronauts' notes in space, the humble pencil has played a role far greater than its size suggests. And through all of this, the name Pencil Lead never changed. It's a reminder of how small mistakes in understanding can ripple through centuries of culture. You might wonder, does it really matter what we call it? In one sense, not really. Everyone knows what you mean when you say pencil lead. But in another sense, it's a great example of how human knowledge evolves. The term reflects a time when science was still catching up to observation. People name things based on what they thought they were, not what they actually were. And once the name caught on, it never left. So why do we call it pencil lead if it's not lead? Because five centuries ago, people stumbled upon graphite and thought it was a form of lead. They kept the name, even after scientists discovered the truth. The label stuck, and today it's just another everyday term we rarely question. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.